trusted ships with valuable cargoes. For a short time, these silent raiders threaten to strangle Allied war effort with their daring attacks. They move swiftly. Their greatest weapon is surprise. At either they button up and crash dive in less than 60 seconds. Below, in the cool green depths, they are safe from detection. The periscope pushes up like the antenna of some great submarine insect. Tong, a coastwise steamer is sighted. Torpedo los! The steel-nosed messenger squirts through the water, filled with the seeds of destruction. A thousand pounds of TNT rip the plating like a great knife. In less than a minute, the simple drama is over. The Rotomays is added to the long list of ships that reach the harbor at the bottom of the sea. Years later, there comes a French naval officer, Yves Cousteau, a man who dreams of opening the door of Davy Jones' locker. He has invented a new kind of underwater breathing apparatus with tanks of oxygen to sustain the swimmer in the depths below. He plans a new kind of adventure, a free diving expedition, without air cables or lines to the sunken wreck on the floor of the sea. With him, he will take a motion picture camera enclosed in a lung of its own pressurized to operate in the new medium. With this equipment, they will remain like fish in the unfriendly element for almost an hour. They fix to their feet the weird flippers, which will be their only means of propulsion down below. The fantasies of Jules Verne are to become real before our eyes. The motion picture camera takes us on a new kind of adventure. A new frontier opens up beneath the sea. The camera goes down to a weird new world of soft, opaque light filtered through the watery depths. A world where fish pose for intimate close-ups, where new kinds of danger make the flesh tremble. Beneath the canopy of rolling surf go the pioneers of a new frontier, never knowing when some sea monster will spring out of the shadows to punish the trespassers in his domain. Deeper and deeper, we enter a world where time and space stand still. A submarine grotto frames the intruder. Here, the restless sea is still, muffling all sounds like velvet. If we cry for help, it will not even make a noise. A huge skate takes one look and flies away like some prehistoric bird. But the diver presses on to the bottom and finds some evidence that humans have been here before him alive or dead, but human. A dark shape takes form in the limpid shadows. A barnacle-encrusted propeller is a telltale hint of deserted decks above. Boldly, our diver sets out to explore the silent wreck, never knowing what adventure will spring from behind any stanchion. Gliding effortlessly along moss-coated decks, the diver questions of the past. What ship was this? What her destination? What frightened hand last touched this rail and this wheel, now worm-eaten and crusted? What steersman stood here, pride in his hands, eyes on the compass, stood here managing his ship until the great clang of the torpedo sounded in the deck plates and the waters closed over him? Jagged steel, Sharp shells can tear at the diver's bare skin. There is fascination here, but there is danger too. Is this dead searchlight the only eye that watches? What man, fragile, cuttable, breakable, can bring himself to enter the mystery that lies in this darkness with its hint of unknown horrors? Yet below he goes, taking a header through one of the hatches, 
as if going down into the neck of any ink bottle. Fear is measured out by pounding heartbeats. Once there was man-made light, cheerful sailors, activity. Now all is dark and quiet as a tomb. But this is not a tomb. There is life here, strange life. The life of a diver marked by the ascending stream of bubbles which may suddenly cease at any moment. And other life too. Why are there so many fish around sunken ships? Whatever the reason, this is now their home. There are small fish, and bigger fish to eat the smaller fish, and bigger fish to eat the bigger fish. And who knows what swift monster, with a shark's hunger and a thousand teeth, uses this for a private game preserve. Across the deck he squirms like an eel. If he is caught, there is no rescue line, no stout manila to tug for a signal, no strong-handed mates to haul him up from below. He will struggle, using up oxygen faster because he struggles, until finally the bubbles cease rising. Like an avid curio hunter in an old antique shop, he expends time and energy to seek for a memento of his underwater daring. He finds a strange-shaped jug, a wine pitcher perhaps. The souvenir seems heavy, but he is resolved to bring back proof of his find. He sends up his loot to the sunlit world above. The ship is shattered, but the plates are unbroken, and they become the adventurer's prize. Now his air supply is almost gone. Mortal man must return to his own element or become food for the fish. The pressure, many feet of water, presses on his body like a great vice. The head pounds and feels as if it may burst like a rotten melon. But he cleaves upward, upward, away from the wonders and perils of the new found world under the sea. Safe, unhurt, he rises out of the danger and darkness and swims upward toward the promise of a sun-drenched day. <laughs> 